to my boring ass car. Yo, what's going on everyone? Today we're gonna go pick up a part from a friend I made on the uh, Facebook group for our 86 PRZ and FRS community here in Toronto. Uh, he's uh, graciously just giving me a part that he took off his car. It's a uh, traction control buttons because like, I messed up mine uh, making a hole for the button for my valve exhaust which didn't fit. Um, speaking of the valve exhaust, I got the valve open right now, man. This thing sounds sick. <laughs> Alright guys, Leo is saving my ass, giving me a module because I messed up mine uh, trying to install my uh, valve exhaust button and you guys got to check out his wide body 86, right? Oh, this is a BRZ. BRZ yeah. It's a BRZ. I just saw the badge as soon as I said that. Damn, dude, your car is super clean. This is what? Is this a Rocket Bunny V3? V3, yep. Damn. This is actually even my first time even like being up close to one. Shit, man. Thanks so much. Where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, uh, Leo with two O's, dot Yang, Y-A-N-G with two G's. All right. So I'll put his uh, Instagram down in the description. You guys can check him out. Check out his sick car. Ah, uh, props, dude. Just to put today's video in context, today we'll be swapping out the manual traction control buttons for automatic buttons and uh, wiring this up to do some custom stuff as a stealth switch so you can hide your mods more easily. Yo, what up guys? Welcome back to the man cave. Uh, check out the new 3D printer I got. I'm gonna be using this to make some car parts in the coming videos. But uh, for now, I do have the button for the electronic control uh, for my valve exhaust in the last video. Um, you guys might have already seen that I tried to fit it inside my original uh, traction control blank switch, but um, the button's too long for it. But thanks to Leo, he gave me his uh, automatic one because he replaced his with uh, the black JDM Toyota one. And uh, this is actually gonna make my life quite a bit easier. So what I'm gonna do is uh, rewire the module that's sitting right here so that every time I press sport it'll activate the function of that button and um, for now I'll just have the up button do what I want so it'll be like uh, loud it'll return back to normal and then it'll go quiet and the snow or whatever this bottom button is uh, I'll save that for something else in the future whatever needs a momentary switch in the future I'll put that there and then one day we'll figure out how to relabel this in a nice clean way so if you guys are interested in doing this, there's a thread on the forum, I'll link down below, where a guy basically converted his manual um, traction control blank switch to do the same thing. And what it does is he modified this button to be able to toggle back and forth. And then he 3D printed a part that goes inside the blank switch that allows you to actually uh, hit the pressure points on the module. Yeah, and if you guys are interested in how to do the wiring, I'm going to be using that same link for reference. And uh, you guys can follow along with what I do. And just so you guys know what's happening, these up and down buttons, they actually make contact with the pads uh, up here and down here. And every time they press down, they make a momentary connection uh, for your voltage. So what I'm going to do is, uh, using the link as reference, basically you just have to scratch the trace. So you expose the copper underneath, you solder one wire there and one wire to the negative, which is either this one or this one, depending on if you're going for the top or the bottom. Um, and then that's it. So basically, once you get that working, every time you press the button down, it'll activate a momentary connection, which is exactly the same as what this button does. So depending on your use, this isn't going to be like a permanent on and off, um, like you might be used to. That's like more of a toggle, but this is a momentary connection. So depending on your application, uh, momentary connection might be what you want. Okay, so just to give you guys an idea of what a momentary switch does, you can see I've got two probes of my multimeter uh, one on the negative end, one on the positive end um, of this barrel jack connector. And when you press the button, you get a connection. And only when you press the button. So while I'm holding it, that beep is going on. That means there's connectivity there between the two. So I've done the same with the spare I have here. And when you press the contact pad on that PCB board, it'll basically just bridge this red and black together like that. And basically give you the exact same result. Now I'm going to be using this soldering iron I got uh, off Amazon. It's definitely not that good. I haven't even used it yet, but I know it's not going to be that great. But it should be good enough just to, just to um, do these two light connections I need. Uh, I highly recommend not soldering in a place uh, like your bedroom, like I'm doing, and make sure you have good ventilation. Um, and if your solder material has lead, then definitely clean your hands before and after. Actually, it's a good habit to clean your hands before and after when soldering anyway. So 
if you see any bad practices here, don't worry about it. Just don't do what I do and do something better. <laughs> All right, so I'm not sure how well you can see that, but um, I scraped off the trace and I've exposed the copper here. So this isn't gonna be a guide about how to do this specifically. Uh, don't use what I'm doing as a guide, please. Like I'm not a soldering expert. I do this at work sometimes. Um, but I have exposed that here and I'm gonna be soldering one wire to there and one wire to here. And that will make the connection to press the up button. All right, and you guys can see I've got the red and black solder to the board. Um, let's just quickly test if it works or see if I ruined an $80 PCB. All right, so same test. We'll put the black and the red inside the connector and press this. And I knew that wasn't gonna work or I had a suspicion that wasn't gonna work. So this is the rubber boot that goes on top of that. And I assume that pressing this gives a better contact to that pad. Oh yeah, look at that. Dude, that is so sick. So you can tell that's basically the exact same function as uh, the push button over here. It's a momentary connection and I believe that's all we need um, to test the valve control in the car. So the only thing left to do is to cut a little notch on the side of the plastic here so we can run the wire nice and, nice and smoothly um, outside of this, so when this closes down, it has somewhere to pass through. Uh, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna button this up and go plug in the car and see if it works. Sorry, just one last thing before we go to the car. If you guys are modifying an automatic uh, control module, uh, like I am, to use in a manual car, you'll notice inside the connector on the back, on the left side there, there's one pin, a blank, and then three pins going from the top to the bottom. And then on the manual, you'll see you have one pin on the top and then the middle pin of those three that were in the automatic. Um, so those top and bottom pins, those are for the sport and the snow mode, and uh, probably we'll just have to snap those off from inside. And you can just get a little plier and bend that back and forth until they pop. But uh, I'm going to plug this into the car as is and see if we actually need to do that. If not, I'll leave it, and if so, we'll break it off and uh, check that there's no weird conflict in the car when we press the button. Alright, so excuse the pajamas. Uh, got the module all closed up here, and the first test is going to be um, plugging it into the adapter for the valve exhaust control and making sure that works before we plug it into the rest of the uh, traction control harness. So I'll just turn that on. All right, so let's see if we can hear the valves. You know what? I don't know why, but I'm surprised that that worked. So that's working pretty sick. All right, guys, we got our first stealth switch in the car. And uh, let's see if it works with this now. All right, guys, I just zoomed in quite a bit here so you can see uh, what I was looking for with the pins. And you can see this row here that I'm dragging my finger across. You can see there's... Uh, two pins there and on this that's gonna mirror over to these three here so or sorry these four here so what I was saying before about the top and the bottom pin being for snow and sport mode and maybe having to snap those off uh, I think we'll get away with not doing anything because they're honestly not even pinned in the harness from the car so I think we'll be okay so let's plug this in and test it out all right, so I do have the harness plugged in. Let's uh, turn the car on and sanity check our connections. So it lights up. That's pretty good. And uh, let's see if we can hear our valves. Okay, and I'm expecting no problems because like I showed in the harness, uh, those two pins are not actually connected in the car harness um, and I can't actually tell because I probably got to turn the car on so let me go get changed and uh, we'll take the car out and test this out oh, I'm so excited this is pretty awesome all right so that's with the valves uh, closed and uh, let's 
give it another try here. It's open. No red lights on the dash. Let's just try our traction control buttons and make sure everything works. So this is the uh, left one. That's good. Turn it off. This is the right one. Okay, that works. If I hold both, Yeah, so everything works fine. This is pretty sick. And if I press any of those uh, automatic buttons, nothing shows up. So these aren't actually activating anything that the car thinks it's doing. And it's working pretty well. I'm happy with that. All right, so it is a bit of a bummer that we're not gonna be using the nice uh, push button that came with the kit. But um, it would have made it kind of obvious that there's something aftermarket happening uh, in the center console area so yeah and it is kind of weird to see like the automatic buttons in a manual car but I guess no one's gonna see that and notice it and uh, it doesn't bother me honestly so I'm happy with how this came out it's working pretty well and uh, maybe you guys can give me some ideas of what I can uh, plug into the bottom button here so I'm thinking maybe some lighting stuff could be the starlight headliner or even um, underglow if I end up going that route uh, so yeah, lots of options. And again, massive shout out to my friend Leo who hooked me up with these buttons for free. Leo, if you need anything, let me know because I am in your debt. <laughs> Alright guys, so I just did a bit of driving and it's actually working pretty well. So let me uh, show you guys what's going on here. Um, so let me give you guys a quick rev with the valves closed. And if I press the button. So that's actually working really well. I'm super happy with this. Alright, so with that being said, that basically concludes the install and setup of my valve cap back exhaust. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys want some more context, you want to hear how this exhaust system sounds, uh, I'll put a link up in the, uh, I'll hover it up here, wherever, whatever that's called. You guys can check that out and uh, see how the system was put together and how it sounds. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. Peace out.